Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Welcome everyone. Today we are going to discuss about a very important topic being readily asked in uh, vivas, in interviews, uh, azeotropic and extractive distillation and the difference between the two. Um, we are not going to go into the detailed uh, graphical approach but we will explain theoretically what is the basic difference between azeotropic and extractive distillation. Now we need to understand why do we apply azeotropic and extractive distillation. We apply that when the normal distillation methods fail. That is two conditions I am giving. First of all, whenever, supposedly we have to separate A and B, A plus B is a mixture. This A plus B forms a constant boiling mixture, forms a constant boiling mixture. That is, we tend to separate A and B by boiling it, by giving it energy, so that some amount of A goes to the top, the majority of A is obtained at the top and the majority of B is obtained at the bottom, supposedly, B being heavier than A. But here what happens is, A and B tend to be associated with each other such in such a way that if we form vapor, it will have the same concentration as the feed and if we go for the bottom products as the liquid, it will have the same concentration as the feed. That is, if we supply 50% A, and 50% B, this will also contain 50% A, 50% B and this will also contain 15% A, 50% B because they form a constant boiling mixture. The two components do not get separated from each other but uh, they boil with each other to form a constant boiling mixture. And this is an example of azeotrope. Azeotrop is such a solution, azeotrop is such a type of solution where the components boil together but does not separate from each other quite easily. And here we follow azeotropic distillation. What is azeotropic distillation? We deliberately feed in an entrainer what does that entrainer do that entrainer forms a minimum boiling azeotrope further with a suppose anyway. now what does that minimum boiling azeotrope do as the name suggests it requires minimum boiling to form vapors that is if a is lighter than b supposedly a is lighter than B, I am showing it as less than, weight of A, molecular weight of A, or volatility of A is more than B, that is it, it, it has a higher volatility than B. So if we mix C, that is my entrainer, in this mixture of A and B, A and C will form a uh, azeotrope. In the beginning A and B were an azeotrope, but as we feed in C, it forms an azeotrope with A and thereafter B gets separated. So if we have to separate B and A, then this can be a one technique wherein A plus C goes up and B goes to the bottom from a distillation column. Now, a challenge that remains is separation of A plus C because now A plus C is forming an azeotrope. So that's a problem associated with azeotropic distillation. But we have separated A and B which was our desiring uh, method. We were suggest, trying to suggest a method by which A and B can be separated because they were forming, forming a constant boiling mixture. So we have added an entrainer that will form an azeotrope with C, with A and will remove B in the process. Now we go for extractive 
extractive distillation. What is extractive distillation? It also employs a method where A and B cannot be separated. Number two, because their relative volatility, relative volatilities are similar. If relative volatilities are similar, they have similar volatilities and both of them tend to uh, fly off in the vapor or both of them tend to remain in the liquid simultaneously. So we add C, once again an entrainer, similar to azotropic distillation. Now the C goes and changes the property of B, changes the property of A, such that B's volatility decreases, A's volatility increases. Now you see, here A was lighter than B, but here A and B have similar volatilities. But what, and that's why both of them tend to form vapor or both of them tend to form liquid at a particular temperature. But what C does, it changes the volatilities of B and A. So it is affecting the volatility rather than forming an azeotropic mixture. So what happens is, from the top, we obtain A, mainly A with traces of C maybe, in traces. And in the bottoms, we get mainly B with obviously some amount of C associated with it. But B comma C and not A plus C. It is not B plus C. That is, it is not forming an azeotropic mixture. Thus, the separation of B and C is much easier than in the case of azeotropic distillation to separate A and C. Because A and C formed an azeotropic mixture. But C here didn't form an azeotropic mixture with A or B. It just changed the volatility of A and B. Decrease the volatility of B, increase the volatility of A, so that A formed vapors and C remained as liquid. That is, it is changing the relative volatility. Whereas for A and B, it is separating A from B and forming an azeotropic mixture with one of them. Thus, extractive distillation should always be followed when relative volatilities are similar. And it is a much easier technique than azeotropic distillation. But azeotropic distillation has to be used to break azeotropes break a constant boiling mixture to form another azeotrope. But then the separation of that azeotrope becomes difficult. The extractive distillation should be followed wherever it can be. It is preferred over azeotropic distillation. But somewhere, some, sometimes these relative volatilities are not similar. They are different from each other, but still it forms a constant boiling mixture. Therein, you will have to employ azeotropic distillation. An example of both, I would like to give to conclude with, First example is water plus ethanol, the entrainer being benzene. Benzene and water combining with each other to form an azeotrope, thereafter going at the top and ethanol being collected from the bottom. In the second case of extractive distillation, it forms the example of benzene plus cyclohexane. As you can see, both of them have similar structures, the similar volatilities, and extractive distillation and trainer is aniline. One type of solvent that forms a solution such that cyclohexane's volatility decreases and benzene's volatility increases. Thus it's affecting the volatility and not forming a complex or an azeotrope with either of them. Whereas benzene is forming an azeotrope with water, which is separate to which is difficult to bring. This is an example of azeotropic and this is an example of extractive distillation. And both of them are followed when it cannot be, A and B cannot be separated by normal distillation. So these are the two topics, we have not gone into the detailed approach, you can always refer to other notes of other professors if you want to. If you like this work, like, subscribe, comment, share our work. That's it for today. Thank you.